Okay, so now we finally get to move on to some of the more exciting stuff. Um, we're going to take a look at our first model of a computer and learn how to prove some things about it. So our first model of a computer is going to be called a deterministic finite automaton. Um, many of them are deterministic finite automata, but if you have only one, um, we're going to call it a deterministic finite automaton. And this is going to be a machine that is very, very simple. It's a computer that can only do one thing. If you have a deterministic finite automaton, which is abbreviated DFA, um, then it will be able to represent a regular language for you. Um, and really, usually we tend to say that it, um, instead of represents a language for you, we say that a DFA will recognize a language. Okay? And by that I mean a DFA will tell me whether a regular language, whether, whether a string is in the language or is not in the language. Okay? So, until now, we've only been able to represent regular languages as either sets of strings or as regular expressions. But now we're going to be able to use these DFAs. And these DFAs are just going to be another way to do it. And they are, in fact, a very simple computer. So before I show you what a DFA is, let's just review for a minute. Um, let's suppose that we have this alphabet A, which has two symbols in it. One is A and one is B. Okay? Um, and there's lots of languages you could make with just two symbols, right? Um, but let's talk about this particular language, which is the language that has this first set concatenated with this second one, where the first set is we have two A's, and then we concatenate that with zero or more b's, right? So if we want, we could actually um, list out the elements of this set. Uh, so we could say, let's see, we've got a set, and I guess there's no elements of length zero and no elements of length one, um, but we do have a string that just has two a's in it. And then we have a string that has two A's in it followed by a B. And then another string that has two A's in it followed by two B's, and so on. Okay? So let's take this and just put it up there so we remember. And so what I want to ask you is the following. Can you give me a regular expression for this language, right? I've shown you how to represent it as a set. Can you represent it as a regular expression? And your answer, hopefully, is sure, that's not too bad. Um, I'm going to say I need an A concatenated with an A and then zero or more Bs, right? And you might remember that really we should have some dots in there if we were being formal, right? It's A dot A dot B star, but we get um, very lazy very fast and we tend to leave out those dots. Okay, so let's take this guy and just shrink it down a bit and put it up there in the corner. So next question, let's just talk about some strings that are in AAB star and some strings that are not in AAB star. And of course we have listed a few strings up here, right, that are already in my language. Um, but let me show you a few that are and a few that aren't. So here's some strings that are in my language. And you can just verify that all of those strings um, match this language, right? So they start with an A and then another A and then zero or more Bs. And some other strings that are not in my language. So here's a list of some strings that are not in my language. So if you look at these strings over here, um, none of them match this pattern. They don't have two A's followed by zero or more B's, right? So here 
we don't start with two A's, we just have two B's. This next one starts with three A's, which is too many, or one A. So all of these strings are in my language, and none of these strings are. Okay, so finally we get to take a look at a DFA. And it looks an awful lot like a graph, right? It looks an awful lot like a directed graph where our edges are labeled. Um, a couple of things to tell you about this. First off, if you look um, over here, it's got this weird, um, the word start with the arrow. That's different than what we're used to. The other thing we're not used to with our directed graphs is this um, two here with the double circle, right? So um, double circle is new and start is new. The other thing that's new here is another form of shorthand. And effectively, we're just being lazy again. So I'm sure you remember um, that earlier on we said that we could draw a graph um, and we could draw this graph and we would just get lazy and if we wanted to draw that we'd draw a double-headed arrow and we know that there are no double-headed arrow in double-headed arrows in directed graphs so strictly speaking this is not a directed graph it's just something weird um, but we have all agreed that we're going to use this picture with a double-headed arrow to represent two single arrows mostly because it's easier and faster to draw so in the same way that this thing is an abbreviation for this thing, we're going to say that if I have a graph and maybe I have an arrow here that's labeled with an A and I have another one here that's labeled with a B and I have another one here that's labeled with a C, I'm going to have a shorthand for that which I will just have um, the two nodes, so let's suppose we call this node 1 and node 2, so here's 1 and 2 again, um, but instead of having all three of those A, B, and C arrows, I'm just going to put one arrow, but above it I'm going to write an A, and then a comma, and then a B, and then a comma, and then a C. And that's just going to be another shorthand, that's just because we get lazy, and you can see that that happened right here. So this um, curved arrow here that starts at node 3 and goes back to node 3 actually represents two arrows. One arrow that's labeled A and one arrow that's labeled B. But it's going to be easier for us to draw one arrow. So that's what we do. Okay, so finally let me show you what this DFA does. This DFA is going to recognize strings that are in a particular language. And every DFA only recognizes strings that are in one language. This DFA recognizes strings that are in the language AAB star. So let me show you how it works. What happens is we pick a string that we want to process and let's start with this um, string AA. And let's imagine that we have dumped it into our DFA, into our computer, and we're going to kind of chug a crank, and we're going to see what happens. And when we are done, it's going to either put a green light bulb on on top, which means, yep, that string is in my language, or a red light bulb, which says, no, that string is not in my language. So here's how we process a string. So we're going to look at the first letter in our string. And we're going to go to the start location on our, on our um, DFA. We're going to say, what's the first letter? And as you can see, that first letter is an A. And what we're going to do is we're going to start at state 0. And we're going to follow the edge that has an A on it. So we're going to follow this edge until we get to state 1. So here I am at state 1. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to cross off that A. We've processed that first letter A. So now we're going to move on to the second letter A. And what we'll do is we'll say, well, I'm at state 1 right now. And if I see an A, I continue on and I end up at state 2. And then we will cross off that next letter A. 
at this point, we look at our string and we say, boy, I finished my string. So where am I in my DFA? I'm at state two. And state two happens to have this fancy double circle. And if I have a fancy double circle, that means accept, right? So that means, yes, this string is in my language. So let's just check that off to say, yep, it's in my language. And now let's keep going. Let's check this next string. So we move our DFA arrow to start, and we're at state 0, and our first letter is the letter A. So we follow the A edge, and then we cross off that first A. And then there's another A, so we follow another A edge, and then we cross it off. And now we have a B, so we will loop with this B edge, and we stay at 2, but we cross it off. And now we do the next B, you can see where this is going, and so we follow the B edge again, and then we cross it off, and we look at the next B, so we follow the B edge, and then we cross, and I guess I'll just keep going. We do the next B, so we follow the B edge, and then we cross it off, and hurrah, almost there. And now, last B, we follow the B edge, we cross it off, nothing left. So we say, where am I? Well, I am pointing at something with a double circle. Um, so that um, double circle means that I do not, I, I, I get to say, I get to accept. And so I get to say that this string here is in my language. All right. Let's try again now. And this time, let's try with a string that's not in my language. So let's try this string BB. So we get set up to start. We're at the start. The first letter we see is a B. So this time we follow the B arrow. And there we are. And then, of course, we cross it off. And now the next letter is a B. So we follow this B loop and then we cross it off and we see that we're at the end of the string and so we check and we say oh look I'm not pointing at a double circle so since I'm not pointing at a double circle um, I do not accept the string so now I can say for sure that that BB does not um, is not in my language it's not in the language Okay, so let's just do one more for good measure. Let's do this one. So we go back to start. We start at state zero. We see a letter A, so we follow the path for A. And then we cross out that first A. And next letter we see is another A. So we follow that path. And then we cross out the second A. Next letter is also an A. So we follow that path, and then we cross out the A. Last letter is a B, so we follow that path, and then we cross out the B. And now you can see we're at the end of the string, so we check and we say, am I pointing at a double circle? Nope, I am not pointing at a double circle, so that tells me that this string here is not in my language. Nope. So, I'll leave these other two examples for you to do, right? You can do this extra string and show me that this string is actually in the language or this string here. Let's move this out of the way. There you go. Um, so that you can say that this string here is not in the language. So now that we've kind of seen how DFA works, let's talk about 
what actually is a DFA? And I'm still going to give you a very informal definition. At some point, I'm going to give you a very mathematical definition. For now, we're going to do something that is just very informal. Okay? So, you know you have a DFA if... For starters, you've got a finite directed graph. Okay, you have to have a finite directed graph or no DFA. And the next thing that you have to have is that each node in your graph emits one labeled edge for each symbol in A. So right now my alphabet is A, B, and you'll see that out of zero, I have an A edge and a B edge. And out of one, I have an A edge and I have a B edge, right? And out of two, yep, there's the A edge, and there's my B edge leaving two, right? Same out of three, whoops, out of three, I've got an A edge and a B edge, okay? You only are allowed one start state. You are allowed a set of final states, okay? So zero or more. So, oops, I sort of answered my questions. Well, how many start states can we have? And the answer is exactly one. Why? Because that's what I told you, right? It has one special start state. And how many final states can we have? Well, let's see. I said it's a set. Um, so there could be zero. And there could be one and there could be two. What's the most we could have? Well, remember that a final state is represented by a double circle, right? So the most final states we could have is however many states we have. So in this particular graph, we have four states, right? And so this particular graph could have four final states. Other graphs might be different. So here's something for you to try. Here is our um, DFA that recognizes the language AAB star. And instead of recognizing just plain old AAB star, I want to now recognize the language A, A, A plus B star. So first, let's make sure we understand what this language is. Um, obviously, every string in the language starts out with two A's. Um, but whereas this one up here ended with a B star, so we had A, A, and then zero more B's, here we have an A, then another A, and then zero or more of what's inside of this, of these parentheses. And remember that this, um, uh, the stuff in the parentheses is equivalent to the set containing A and B, right? So, um, so this says you're going to have one A, then another A, and then zero or more things out of this set. So you could have AAAA or AAAB or AABB. You just have to start with two A's, and then you can have zero or more A's or B's in any order that you want. Okay? So right now, um, we start at state zero, and we have our two A's, so that's going to look more or less the same. But pause the video for a minute and just see if you can figure out how do I let it have as many A's or B's as possible. So the answer is what you need to do is you need it to be the case that once you get to state 2, right, so you've seen 1A and you've seen a second A, anything after that is fair game, right? So what you need to do is if you've seen um, two A's, then you can see either an A or a B, so that should say A comma B here, right? I assume you understand that's what I've written here, right? A or B on this loop, and you can just stay here. The only catch, of course, now is that state two has two um, out arrows for A, right? State two, you could go out arrow for A here, or out arrow for A here, so what we need to do is we also need to just cross out that transition, that, that arrow. Um, and now we'll talk about some fancy DFA lingo. You want to go to a party and you want to talk about DFAs. You want to sound um, like you know what you're talking about. 
So um, we're going to call, instead of using the word node, we're going to use the word state now. Okay. And instead of using the word edges when we talk about a DFA, we're going to talk about the transitions. And like I said before, if you have one of these, we call it a deterministic finite automaton. But if you have more than one, they are called deterministic finite automata. So here's something that's interesting that we're not going to prove right now, but um, that's still pretty interesting, which is if you have a regular language, then you definitely can build a DFA that will recognize it. In other words, that will say this string is in the language, that string's not. And if you already have a DFA, you can definitely find a regular expression that accepts or that represents the same regular language as the language recognized by that DFA. So we're not actually going to prove this for now, but, um, but I will tell you that it is the case. We'll, we'll probably prove it later. Um, but meanwhile, I will tell you that there is, in fact, a way to turn a regular expression into a DFA. Right? There's an algorithm. You, got, you just kind of follow the steps, and it turns the regular expression into a DFA. And there is another algorithm that will turn that DFA into a regular expression. So that's kind of interesting.